Hello everyone, welcome to Explore Electronics. In this video, let us see the next concepts in module 4 that is analog and digital communication, that is multiplexing types of communication and different modulation techniques available. So here we are going to discuss these topics. Let us get into the multiplexing first. What is multiplexing? The definition says multiplexing is a process which allows more than one signal to be transmitted through a single channel. Means in the communication block diagram we have seen there will be a channel and we will be modulating the signal before giving to the channel in a transmitter. So the modulated output will be given to the channel. Channel is going to transmit that. So this is the process what we are going to follow. Suppose a multiple modulators if you have multiple modulating signals if you have this is signal 1, this is signal 2, this is signal 3. Can we transmit these three with a single channel? So the answer is yes, we can transmit. The process will be called as multiplexing. So here the scenario is that suppose many people are speaking simultaneously. So many persons like person 1, person 2, person 3, person 4 and person 5 are in group. They are talking each other simultaneously. So what happens it is impossible to understand the communication between one another. So here mixing of signal is happening. It is becoming a noise. So similarly in communication, if you are going to try to transmit more signals, more than one signal through a same channel, what happens? There will be a mixing of channel and it will be transmit as a noise. To avoid that, what we are supposed to do? We need to adopt a process called multiplexing. Here is the example of that multiplexing. There are three telephones here, telephone one, telephone two and telephone three. The voice which is transmitting through this telephone, this will be called as a modulating signal. It will be having a behavior like this. This signal will be a second modulating signal. This is a third modulating signal. So these three signals are having low frequency signals. Since these three are audio signals, it will be lies between 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. This is a low frequency modulating signal so that it is an audio signal. So this will be given to the modulator. So what modulator is going to do? It will take a high frequency carrier and it is going to modulate. What multiplexing here is, multiplexing is a process which we will be having a single channel like this but we are going to use different carrier signals means different frequency signals for each and every modulating signal. For this modulating signal we are using this type of carrier, it will be having a different frequency. This second carrier will be having different frequency than this third carrier will be having different frequency than these two. So the modulated signal what we are getting out of the modulator will be having three different frequencies. So since we will be having three different frequencies, we can combine together and transmit through a single channel. So at the receiver what we are going to do, receiver will be doing exactly the reverse operation of modulation. So it is going to do the demodulation. At the demodulation obviously we are going to give the carrier. So here we are going to give the particular carrier if we want to take out the first baseband signal. This carrier will be used at the receiver to take out this baseband signal. Similarly, this frequency of carrier will be used to take out the second baseband signal. Similarly, at the receiver, if we are going to use the third carrier frequency, we can retrieve the third modulating signal. So depending on the different frequencies we are going to use at the carrier, at the modulating, we, are, we can transmit through a single channel that will be called as multiplexing. So there are different types of multiplexing available. One is FDM that is frequency division multiplexing means here as I said the carrier frequency are going to be chosen as a different frequencies for different signals. So here you can observe this is time and this is frequency. So the three colors indicating the different frequency bands we will be using for modulation. So we can transmit through a single channel. And one more thing is TDM, time division multiplexing. Here the same carrier is used. Here the carrier frequency is same. Here in the FDM carrier frequency is different. So with the same carrier, if we transmit that signal in a different time, different time in the sense, in the first uh, time slot, a one signal will be transmitted. In the next time slot, other signal will be transmitted. In the next time slot, one more signal will be transmitted. This will be called as time division multiplexing. Here we can transmit different signals through a same channel, but we will be allotting the time for that. Here in the FDM, we will be having different carrier frequencies itself. At the receiver, we are going to use that particular 
carrier. That is how the multiplexing will be done and we can transmit multiple signals through a single channel. Next, the different types of multiplexing are FDM and uh, TDM we have seen and also we will be having WDM that is wavelength division multiplexing. Now let us see the different types of communication systems. As we know, we have seen in the previous video, there are two types of communications available. One is analog communication, other one is digital communication. And also we have a baseband communication and a carrier communication, right? So let us see the communication types here. First thing is communication systems based on the physical interface. Physical interface in the sense, how we are going to connect the two devices for the communication. That is the interface. So the first thing is line communication. In line communication, there will be a connected path or we say the two devices are going to be connected together through a wire or twisted pair of cable or a coaxial cable. So here we can categorize the communication through a cable in three types, simplex, half duplex and full duplex. What do you mean by simplex? Simplex in the sense, it is one way of communication. This is what a transmitter or a sender and this is a receiver. It can send and the monitor can receive. This is, let us call it as a CPU and this is a monitor. So CPU can send the data to a monitor. It will be in this direction. This will be called as simplex communication. So monitor will not be sending any data in a reverse direction to CPU. Only one direction communication. It will be called as simplex. Half duplex, half duplex in the sense, there are two computers connected. So two computers are going to be sending and receiving the data each other, but the time of sending will be different. Means if system one is sending a data to system two in time one at one time slot, in second time slot, system two will be sending the data to the first system. This is at different time. Means the two communications are going to be happen in different times. At a time, there will be no communication happen in this way. First communication will be happen and then after the second communication will be happen once this get completed. The best example for the half duplex communication is that walkie talkie. You can observe while a policeman talking in a walkie talkie, one policeman will be giving the information to the other. After completion of one, the other will be started his communication. That is how the walkie talkie is going to work with a half duplex communication. Full duplex in the sense, it is like a telephone communication what we are going to use. In a telephone, a two users are going to be connected. Both users can talk together, right? That is a duplex communication will be called as full duplex. A single line communication will be called as simplex communication. This can be something like a TV communication where only in one direction we are going to send the data to a uh, receiver. This is how the line communication is going to work with a simplex, half, half duplex and full, du full duplex model. The next thing is as we seen analog communication system and a digital communication system where we are going to use the base band of analog type, where we are going to use the base band of digital type means the information what we are sending, if it is of analog type we call it as analog communication. If the information what we are sending is of digital type, we call it as digital communication. And the based on the nature of the transmitted signal, if we categorize, if we transmit the baseband signal as it is without modulation, it will be called as baseband communication. If we are going to modulate this baseband signal with a high frequency carrier and the combination of this will be one more uh, signal that will be called as carrier modulation. Here in the carrier modulation, we are going to use a modulation technique carrier communication we use modulation technique at the transmitter in the baseband communication there will be no modulation technique used so this is what the categories of different communication systems based on the signal specifications now let us see the different types of modulation techniques available before going to the modulation techniques let us understand what is modulation so modulation is a process in which any one of the parameters like amplitude, frequency or phase of high frequency carrier signal is varied accordance to the instantaneous value of the low frequency message signal. Suppose this is my message signal, it will be having low frequency. This is my carrier frequency, will be having a high frequency signal. So the frequency of this is going to be changed accordance with this. Our amplitude of this is will be changed accordance with this. That is what the modulation is by keeping the other two constant. If it is AM, we need to keep the frequency as phase 
constant and we are going to vary only amplitude. In FM, we are going to vary the frequency keeping amplitude and phase constant. That is how the modulation is going to work. So the different types of modulation techniques are in analog communication we will be having AM that is amplitude modulation then frequency modulation and phase modulation. In digital communication we will be having amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. Let us see one by one and let us understand how the modulation is going to work. Before that we need to understand why we need modulation. What happens if we are not going to modulate a signal as we know modulation is required to transmit the signal to a larger distance. So it will increase the range of communication and it will improve the quality of reception also. At the receiver, the receiver is going to receive the signal with a quality means it will reduce the noise effect. Then reduces the height of antenna. Suppose if you are not going to modulate a signal, the height of antenna what we are going to place to transmit the signal will require a very high antenna size means this is what the height of the antenna with respect to the ground. This height will be the height requirement of the antenna will be very high if we are not going to use modulation. This modulation reduces the height of antenna and allows multiplexing. We have seen at the starting of uh, this uh, video itself what is multiplexing. We can, uh, we can transmit multiple signals through a single channel. That is what multiplexing is. And bandwidth extension. We can extend the bandwidth of the communication we are using modulation also means the different frequencies we can say and increase in the range of communication means di distance communication will be achieved by modulation it reduces the noise as well as interference let us understand modulation uh, the first thing is amplitude modulation as i said it is a process by which amplitude of the carrier signal is varied in accordance to the instantaneous values of the message signal means this is my modulating signal or a baseband signal or it will be called as an information. So this signal will be having a low frequency. This will be called as low frequency signal. And this is a high frequency carrier. This is a carrier signal will be having high frequency. So we are going to modulate these two. What we are going to change here? We are going to change the amplitude of this high frequency carrier signal. Amplitude of this will be changed and we are not going to alter the amplitude of the modulating signal. That is what modulation is. We need to, if it is an amplitude modulation, we are going to vary the amplitude of the carrier signal as the amplitude of the modulating signal is. You can observe here, this modulating signal will be having an amplitude, uh, up, um, amplitude this much at this stage. You can see, once we superimpose these two, once we superimpose the baseband signal on the high frequency carrier, depending on the modulating signal amplitude, the carrier is going to be changed. This frequency will be same as this frequency, right? The same frequency will be carried. But if it is an amplitude modulation, how amplitude is increasing here, similarly here the modulated signal is going to be increased with amplitude. Similarly, as it decreases, here also it will be decreasing. At the negative cycles, you can see almost here we are going to get low signal. This is what the amplitude modulation is. If you write the expression for the carrier, this is the carrier signal. C of t is the representation with respect to time is equal to AC cos 2 pi FCT. Similarly, modulating signal can be written as M of t is equal to AM cos 2 pi FMT. The modulated signal, if you look at, it will be like this. This is what the amplitude modulation is. Here, what you need to understand is that amplitude of the signal is going to be varied and frequency of the signal is not varied and phase of the signal is not varied. Now let us understand frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is again a process in which frequency of the carrier signal is changed and we are keeping the amplitude and the phase constant. Which signal frequency we are going to change? We are going to change the carrier signal frequency with respect to the message signal frequencies. So let us see here. So this is a message signal. Obviously this is a carrier signal we are having high frequency and you can see as the message signal amplitude increases here we are increasing the frequency. You can see as the modulating signal is going in this way, the frequency of the carrier will be changed. Frequency is less here and frequency is high here as it reaches the maximum amplitude. Again, as it comes down, the frequency becomes less. So the frequency of the carrier is varying with respect to the modulating signal behavior. That is what 
the frequency modulation is here also the carrier signal will be represented with the same equation here also modulating signal will be represented with the same equation variation in the frequency will be considered and this is the expression for modulated signal after the modulation then we have phase modulation phase modulation is again the process in which phase of the carrier it is phase it becomes phase phase of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the instantaneous values of the message signal where amplitude and frequency are kept as constant so here it is a process by which phase of the carrier signal is varied in accordance with the message signal where amplitude and frequency are keeping as constant this is a message signal this is a carrier signal here you can see the change in the phase once it is the amplitude is changing from uh, high high value to low value as it changing from high to low here the phase is changing from the other angle so similarly here also similarly here also this is what the phase modulation is and the carrier signal message signal are represented with the same expression and modulated signal with respect to the phase is concerned this is the expression we are going to get these three are the very important modulation techniques we are going to follow in analog communication in the next video let us see the digital modulation techniques thank you